Brilliant. Oh god, I actually I was I was doing another movie podcast yesterday. We did um you know the adaptation of The Mist, the uh, Frank Darabont adaptation. Yes. Of Stephen yes. King's The Mist, which is a really surprisingly bloody good film. Well, do you know what? I mean, we've wanted to watch that for a while, and the reason we haven't mm. is because it comes up every week on what culture lists. Yeah. On YouTube uh, to the point now where we know the ending. We know all the mm-hmm, twists and turns. Mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. is no point in watching it. Mm-hmm. Other than the it's, fact that it seems like a how many people can you spot from The Walking yeah. Dead in it. It's a, it's a really decent film that I would advise watching as well. There are two versions of it. There's the, as, there's the one that was intended, which is a black and white version. Oh, really? That's the colour version. They're both very good, but the black and white version is spectacular. Huh. That, that is it's, interesting. I know, right? Very strange for any kind of film from that era, particularly for a, what is essentially a mainstream horror film. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, it, it's surprisingly brilliant. I mean, it 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 feels. Like, I mean, have you read have you read the short story, the novella? Oh, years years ago. Yeah, a long time yeah. ago. It feels like somehow Frank Darabont has dropped a camera into your head, and this is how you imagined it. <laughs> it's that Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson thing. You okay. know, where yeah. it's just the perfect director and crew are working on this thing, and somehow it all comes together. It all comes together. It all works. It's a it's a dark, violent bitch of a film. Cool. Uh, very nasty. Very nasty. It's one of those films that you so you know the ending. Yeah, you you absolutely. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. So it, it changes the ending of the of the of the of the novella, mm. um, and it's. It feels like being punched. You know, it feels like being assaulted. It's yeah. really aggressive towards its audience. And that's a that's such a fascinating thing for a horror film to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, however, the horror film or the film that we're talking about yeah. today appears to not do that at all. No, now, this, no. this is interesting. This is interesting because, you know, 10 years of, of like sort of talking about wanting to do Prometheus, building up to Prometheus, we are now yeah. in the post Prometheus era. Right. What's well, so one interesting thing? And that is definitely a thing, right? There is alien before Prometheus, and then there's alien after Prometheus. Yeah. Now, this film, uh, in case people wasn't fully aware, we are talking about Alien Covenant. Alien and, Covenant. Wow. Yeah. And it's. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to do this. I, I think this is going to be very difficult. This to is do this is going to be the so, hard, this is going to be the hardest one because we uh, went to see this at the cinema mm-hmm. and we enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, we saw it when we bought it on home media, mm-hmm. and we enjoyed it. Yeah. And then we sat down and watched it last week or the week before because I had to gear myself up for this chat, and awesome. something interesting happened. In the, sense, in the sense that we noticed that the film falls apart in record fucking time. Doesn't it just? Doesn't it just? It's so boring. Things That's, that it, we, it's, it's the well, yeah, cardinal it's, sin, right? It's the cardinal sin. You can get away with practically anything in cinema if you if you're interesting. If there's something to get your teeth into. I find I forget this film. I've seen it quite a few times now, but I forget vast swathes of it, and that yeah. is not like me. I can, I have a very sort of visual memory for some reason. When I watch a film, I can normally replay it behind my eyes, you know, yeah. afterwards. Like, like I, Alien some, or Alien yeah, 3. Yeah, right. This one, I'll watch it one year. By, by the same date the next year, I've forgotten almost yeah. everything about it. Yeah, well, there, there was quite a few things um, I forgot. And then when certain things did crop up again, again, it was the same kind of thing that I had with Prometheus where I went, oh, fuck, it's this bit. It's now, this bit. Here's the interesting thing. Because up to now, um, if you if you think of the established universe, the established canon of the universe, there are six films currently in the Alien franchise. Yep. Which means by... Um, and unfortunate circumstances, only f- it has a fifty percent hit rate. Yeah, it's not great, is it really? From four onwards, the quality yeah. 
the attention to detail, the uh, enthusiasm in the filmmaking seems to drop a little bit. Now, well, it really does. This one in particular, this one, this, this, I mean, Prometheus, you can't, you can't leverage this accusation at it. It is not the fact Prometheus really wanted to do something. It's a film that really wants to exist and it wants to tell its audience something. It just fails. It fails spectacularly. Yeah, this, this film, film goes, feels like it doesn't want to exist. It, it feels goes, like it doesn't it doesn't have any real oomph behind it. It feels no. compromised. It feels like it's a, oh, it's a studio mandate, doesn't it? Yeah. It feels like a studio mandate. When they made Prometheus, they clearly signed on for multiple films and they were obliged to make at least one more film. And this is that reluctant, dragged into being compromised thing. Nobody wants to make this film. I mean, even the bad Ridley Scott films, and this is, it's, it's hard and to believe this is Ridley Scott directed, right? It's hard to believe. Because even the bad ones have visual flair. They have this visual panache about them. This the is opening, as generic as all get out. The opening scene between Wayland and David, shortly after David's creation, I guess, <laughs> There's something about the, the the sparsity of the set, or there's something about the, the, the strange camera angles. That entire scene, I could tell, is directed by Ridley Scott. That, that entire that entire thing somehow has a as a as a strange stamp on it. And that yeah. that opening scene, um, it goes doesn't belong the, in this film, though. No, it doesn't. I'm telling when, when you, I said, that is the film, something else. That is that is a scene that was cut from Prometheus. I am telling you. Yes. Now the. When I say the film starts to fall apart almost immediately, and it's in this scene because, um, you know, you were talking about David is aware of his creator, and David's like a little bit unimpressed with his creator. Yeah. The seeds of that are, are, are sown in this scene, yeah. And he says, Well, if you made me, who made you? Blah, blah. Yeah. And there's a thing, Wayland turns around and says something like, Uh, maybe we will discover our plans to discover that together, blah blah blah. blah. So if this takes place like sort of eighty years before Prometheus or whatever, yeah, what has what has Wayland been doing for the last eight years except sitting there with his thumb up his ass on the slim hope that, that two yeah. pricks are just going to walk into his office and go, Randomly. "Will you send this office yeah. to deep space?" Doesn't really make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense. He's yeah. got the resources to do it now, so why didn't he do yeah. it then? Yeah, why so, didn't he do it then? It doesn't know. It doesn't make any sense. And again, it's this whole thing. This is the holdover of Prometheus again. It's pretending to be profound when it's actually not at all. That right. question, the infinite regress question, well, who made you? That's not actually a very good question. because, Or rather, the answer Wayland gives is not a very good answer. The right. answer should be, it isn't necessarily the case that anyone made us. We're a different, you know, we are not created things per se. And all he does is go on this like fundamentalist rant where it's like, oh, yeah. you know, I, it is my faith. It is my, you know, that, that this is the now, case. This, and blah, is, blah, blah. this is something. It's like, hang this on, hang on. We never got this any is... indication of that from Prometheus until Numi Rapace's character, until Elizabeth Shaw tells yeah. him a, that this might be the case. So, now, yeah, it doesn't, again. it doesn't make any sense. This film again goes down the whole. Uh, how much do you put into faith, and is is faith? This film goes down that route again, and bodges it in a completely different way to the first one. So the film, uh, the only one who's got faith in the film, who who pretends to have or or proclaims to have uh, uh, an indoctrination of faith, is the first officer who unexpectedly becomes the captain because of the yeah. Thing. And his uh, his wrestling with his faith and does it contravene uh, his job and so blah 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 is mentioned three or four times and, and that's nothing, it. But it doesn't does have nothing, any bearing. It doesn't have any with bearing. It each time. Does it? Doesn't have any it, bearing on what no. actually happens. That's the no. annoying thing. But the imagery is there. They could have done so much with this. David has effectively created a Garden of Eden, right? That's yeah. the, that's what it's trying to say. But it doesn't fit it doesn't work it doesn't actually do anything with it it's that classic sort of and i know damon lindelof didn't write this but it's clearly taking its cues from prometheus in this regard where yeah. it feels like bringing up the ideas is enough rather yeah. than actually doing something with them also i mean one of the big problems with this film is it is clear there was a bigger script at one point and when you go and look into the making of that is absolutely the case there was 
so much more going to be going on in this script. Also, the crew of the Covenant weren't going to be in the original script. It was about David. Yeah. The whole thing was supposed to be about David, which is, yes, that's the way it should have gone. That's the way it should have gone. The most interesting character with the most interesting dynamics from Prometheus. Yes, let's focus on him. No, let's just make him another boring fucking villain. And that's what this film does. It pretends it's doing something profound, but it's so truncated. It's so boring that any ambiguity or intrigue with David is just ripped away. He just becomes a bad guy in this well, film. The, the scenes between it. him and Walter should have been yeah. a lot more interesting than they were. So, for example, the, the, the dichotomy between what David represents and what Walter represents, like sort of the two sides of the same coin almost. One is pushing the other, but the other one can't push back because it doesn't have the yeah. program to do it. Yeah. And, and all we get out of it instead is um, the immortal line when it comes to the flute playing, I'll do the fingering. That's I'll like, do the oh, fingering, yeah. Yeah, all right. Again, it's That's like, about how, how many times I've watched that. I just, I, I, I'm a 13 year old again. I go, <laughs> this, is, yeah. I mean, this is part of the problem of the film. Again, there are all these wonderful potential ideas. So you get David meeting effectively a, a descendant, a version yeah. of himself, which has, I mean, for whatever the, the Android equivalent of his DNA, effectively, yeah. he, he is born from, from David's template. And that's fascinating. That's really interesting. There is so much that could have been explored there, but it does what Prometheus does. Rather than exploring it in any depth or to any great detail, it errs on, let's make it an action set piece where they fight. And it's like, fuck off. Yeah, Sincerely, badly, are we badly children? cut, I might add. Yes, badly edited and put together. I know, it really is. And it's like, we're not children. You don't have to jangle the keys in front of our faces, okay? You I can think... actually do something interesting here. You can do something quiet and based on dialogue. You know, this could have been so fascinating, but it's yeah. not. It's not. It, it's There's not even fun. stuff like, I mean, you know, they, they do that thing of killing off Elizabeth Shaw in between the films because the character was so, well, because A, Numi Rapace didn't want to come back, and B, it's just, a, it's just a very uninteresting character. There's nowhere to go with her. But there was stuff with Elizabeth Shaw in the original script. And you know what? The stuff in the original script sounds really fucking interesting. Because it's all about her relationship with David. Yeah. Why does she repair him? Because she is the one that repairs him. Yeah. And what that and this, it's the only interesting stuff you get from David in the remaining part of the script, which is that strange affection that he has for her where he says that she is the only human being who ever showed me kindness, you know, and he does seem to sincerely mean that. Yeah. But there's also this ambiguity in the original script where he would have become like the prototype for the alien queen. He was experimenting on her. There was an entire sequence where it would, it would show you what she would slowly become. And it was based on, do you know H.R. Giger's art Lee? Have you ever uh, seen the picture? I've probably it's, seen it, but I don't know it by name. It's like a woman's head and her eyes are sort of up and there's all this like biomechanical growth all around her head, rising in like a crest. It's absolutely amazing. It's is on the that, front of a lot. Is that the one where the woman's in profile or is it yes. face on? No, it's, it's face on, face on. Okay. Um, but it would have been based on that. So right. that would have been interesting. That might have you know that might have actually had some some going in it but no we just get this very sort of like uninterested uh very superficial dismissal of the character and any dynamic that she might have had and yeah. this this is this is what rolls through the entire film so i remember when covenant was first announced and the way they advertised it was by doing these little clips where it was showing you the characters the crew of the covenant and the relationships they have to one another and it was well, was saying that oh my this is going to be character based that all of these characters are going to be so interesting they're all going to have these very interesting relationships and dynamics and it's like they're so boring and so superficial that i often can't remember which one's which i okay i'm, I'm going to dial it back a little bit i'm going to come to that i'm going to dial it back a little bit and, and talk about um the overcompensation that government commits to try and somehow uh, 
make up for what Prometheus failed to do. Now, yeah. the problem the problem is, is in a lot of cases, um, by desperately trying to avoid the mistakes of the previous film, it commits a lot of the same ones. So, for yeah. example, the crew are useless at what they do. Totally useless, and also just blasted. I mean, there's nothing to them. No. They're all really, 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 really dull. It's very hard to distinguish <sighs> between them. When they land on this this planet that they, they haven't detected before, blah, 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 and they take the little uh, dropship shuttle down, blah, blah, <laughs> blah, they open the door, and they all step out, and me and Jen both went, why yeah. aren't any of you wearing fucking why helmets? Why aren't any of you? And lo and behold, of course, what happens is they start getting, like, you know, tainted alien spores in their systems that do all yeah. the to them it's like for fuck's sake you guys are colonists you are responsible for the lives of what is it like 32,000 pe- people 2,000 yeah. people it's like yeah. for fuck's sake but this is ridiculous I'm not, not going to wear a space suit this deer stalker will protect me fucking yeah, this deer stalker this will do it is absurd it is ridiculous and the only reason is for plot contrivance isn't it it's so that you get those like big and again it does that thing that we complained about in prometheus you know in prometheus where it shows you have to have the big close-up of david putting his finger in the whiskey you know yeah. to, just so you know this does exactly the same thing what, was the treading on the uh, the it, exactly spore, the, yeah. the treading on the spot but it doesn't just show you him treading on the spore which would have been enough that would have been enough no yeah. it shows you a close-up of the, the spores rising up coalescing into some sort of weird alien helix shape and going into his ear and it's yeah. like Fuck's sake. And, and the other one goes up his nose. I know. Look, you don't have to do this. We're not idiots. Please stop doing this. Please stop treating us no, like we're fucking no, fools. We're, we're not idiots, but the characters themselves are idiots. So therefore, they you need to try not. and convey just how idiotic they are. I mean, the the some of the decisions taken by uh, the guy who's played by Danny McBride, right? I understand your wife may be in trouble on the planet below, yeah. but you're in command of the ship. You've got 2,000 colonists which you're responsible for, so you're Absolutely. going to take the ship 10 miles above a fucking ion storm. Yeah, it's... it's you, you, it, just, you, you just wouldn't. It, no, it doesn't, it doesn't make a lick of sense. It really, really doesn't. I mean, these people would not... Just like the crew of the Prometheus, these people would not have been hired for this mission if that, that is, were a probability. That's what right? I said to Jen, that if you had this many stupid, genuinely stupid people in one place, right, collectively all together in one place, they would mm-hmm. not be the command crew of a deep space explorer. Uh, absolutely that. Especially not a colonist ship where you've yeah. got 2,000 people to look after, you know, plus all the embryos. It's it's silly. It just doesn't make a lick of sense. I mean, it's, it's a, there's a lot of stuff like that. I mean, like the, the contrivance of the storm, the sort of, the, the, the what is it, a neutrino burst or something, something that like destroys that. half their ship. It's like, well, surely, surely, the, there's compensation for that somewhere surely that is predict if you know what it is if the computer can tell you what it is surely it can detect it or it can preempt it or it can put the ship in a position where it's not going to have that happen but it no. feels really contrived to me it feels really contrived as a way of getting them down on the planet on the ground you know yeah um and this is why i said the film uh, sort of starts undermining itself, and it starts undermining itself a lot quicker than because I, I, I appreciate it when the second time I watched it. All right, this isn't as good as I saw it in the cinema. I still enjoyed it. There were there were flaws, but it's only when I watched it back for this chat that I discovered how quickly the film starts undermining itself very very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, the the crew, for example. So so the first officer Daniels who. For some reason, spends most 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 of the film. I I kind of forget the character that I'm watching, and then for some reason, when the alien or what is supposed to be a pro alien or whatever the fuck it is gets on the ship, um, suddenly uh, it's tank top on. Um, your hair's almost like you're, you're like proto Ripley. And I thought to myself, hang yeah. on, you, yeah. there's nothing in your character up to this point no. that has given me any indication that you're combat capable. For a start. But, no, that's, but that's exactly what they're doing. That's what you just said that that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to to recall Ripley effectively. And yeah. it just doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work because, like you said, we've not been given any indication 
that this character is capable of this. None whatsoever. We've never been given any indication that this is in her character at oh. this point. It just it, it it's ridiculous. It is really, really absurd. Everything is contrived. Everything feels bolted on. To Nothing report, feels sincere in this to film. Agree, you would have said the same thing about Ripley and Alien, except that in Alien she proves actually that she is quite resourceful and she is quite smart. Um, even by going to, from saying from saying yeah, you're not bringing um him back on the ship because mm-hmm. of quality. you can see that she's actually got brains up with Dan- Daniels that's her name with Daniels there's nothing in there that sort of really conveys that you're even remotely close to being on that level no that's the problem I mean with Ripley there is there is indication of what kind of character she is from yeah. the very beginning you know you have the whole thing where she's she's quite hard you know she's quite protocol driven uh, and yeah. she's quite practical you get yeah. none of that with Daniels you get none of it and it's again it's very difficult to distinguish the characters because they kind of all blend together there's not enough time taken because you from the immediate from the off you're in an action set piece from the off it's like oh jangling keys jangling keys because yeah. the audience is too pig shit thick to sit there and have patience and like let the story develop we can't have that so we've got to have action set piece action set piece action set piece so the characters are not given that time to breathe and to develop they 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 are just yeah. flushed through this se- like sequence after sequence after sequence of action horror action horror action horror and you know again there are ideas here that are good i l- don't necessarily mind some of the concepts in those action set pieces it's just that they're so they're so rushed and they're so contrived that they don't have any weight so the notion of the guy who get you know gets flambéed in his in his sleep pod that's awful that's hideous it's a brilliant concept but doesn't yeah. really have any weight because i don't i don't know these people there's not enough time taken you know yeah. to determine and who they are it wasn't worth james franco telling up to do it really right. It's, right. It's, i mean and there's no way believably that he is uh, married to or in a relationship with daniels because first of all she's too old right <laughs> by about 30 years from what i gather mm-hmm. um it's, but you're supposed to have more backs. This is the thing about Covenant, right? Because they, they did a whole bunch of a webisode, like sort of short film things, right? And you got a little bit more of the backstory about him and a few other. If you, but if you hadn't, because I didn't know about those until after the film. If you hadn't right. have watched those little webisode things, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's no indication of these backstories in the damn film. So, you know, it's no good putting out little webisodes and things. They're not on the DVD extras as well, I don't right, think. Right, right. So there's so no point, the point in putting out... Yeah, exactly. What is the point? There is no point in putting out these little webisodes <laughs> saying, oh, these characters are going to be so interesting and so deep. When they... It, whatever they character... Exactly. Whatever character you establish it has no bearing on the film. And it doesn't. Yeah. Most of them... Most of them exists. They exist to be fodder for whatever action set piece they're part of or whatever horror set piece they're part of. And don't get yeah. me wrong, some of the horror set pieces I really like. I do like the um, the guy, the, the, alien, the, the, the proto-alien bur- he bursts out of his back. Yeah, I think no, that's that, kind of cool. I like that. That, that was good. Um, but then, uh, when, when she doesn't open the door, because the other one says, I open the door, blah, 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 and she doesn't. <laughs> and then later she does. And then the first thing she does is slip on the blood, almost like a slapstick sort of thing. Yeah, and yeah. Then she, and then it gets out, and then she shoots, and then she blows up the whole fucking shot. Oh, it's like, it's so what, contrived. Why? So contrived. What? Why would that happen? You you why bought that entirely that... on yourself, right? Yeah. And, and why would it happen? Why? Why yeah. would the ship? Why would the drop ship be that explosive with with a weapon like that on board? If that's a possibility, why would that? Why would that even be a thing? It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. The only reason that happens is for plot contrivance it's so that the people who are on the ground get stuck on the ground and yeah. it enhance it's supposed to enhance that sense of desperation so when david turns up to save them from the from the aliens in the grass you know yeah. they automatically go with him that's what that's supposed to do but it just doesn't feel contrived with that bit when it explodes when it's from like one a couple of shots from a like a little handgun it's essentially like, yeah it doesn't make any sense yeah, I mean, I, do you know what? I mean, th- this film tries to, as I said, it, it's 
it overcompensates for what yeah, Prometheus does. didn't do. The problem is, is then you start adding far too much into the film, far more than mm-hmm. the film is actually realistically be able to handle due, exactly. due to its runtime for a start. So a lot exactly. of things are you, you cut corners on a lot of things. Yeah. Well, um, this is this film is Frankensteinian. When you look at the background of it, it was never meant to be this. The the film we got, it was never meant to be this. It was meant to be a much quieter film. It was meant to be more about focusing on David and Elizabeth Shaw and what they were getting up to on this planet with regards to like after they'd destroyed the uh, the engineer civilization. Yeah. By yeah. the way, not enough given about that. Also, why do the this, this really fucks me off? This is a real problem with the design from that we complained about in Prometheus. Mm. The design elements of the engineers. Why do the engineers look like they're in fucking Jerusalem? <laughs> why, why do, their ship, their armor, their everything about them, their technology has no relation to their architecture at all. No. And that is not how civilizations work. That is the, not how civilization. The only thing about that scene that I liked, right, is after he's somehow parked the ship up in the sky, right, mm-hmm. um, and he opens the uh, the hatch in the bottom, mm-hmm. all the canisters fall out, and they fall out in the style of a DNA helix. Right, right, okay. It's a that, bit on the nose, and it? it's a bit on the nose, but I quite liked the imagery on that. And uh-huh. then immediately after that. Um, everyone starts dissolving or uh, yeah. it's just like sort of, oh, okay, well. Again, it's a wasted opportunity. There's not enough stuff going on there. First of all, you needed way more build-up for just throwing that scene in. And clearly, it's so clear from a storyteller's perspective that that was part of a much longer sequence. Mm. And it was just <laughs> cut, thrown in, you know? Yeah, instead of like, just like a flashback thing. Absolutely. Um, there was so much more going on there. And also, where's Elizabeth while all this is happening? I would have liked to have seen that. But it, what really pissed me off about the sequence, beyond its like pointlessness, is the fact that the engineers look like they look like they're from like Jerusalem in like 200 BC. It's like uh, why? That doesn't make a lick of sense. They're, they're, because of the way that we know what their architecture looks like, because we know what their technology looks like, we know what their ships look like. Mm. Their civilization should look like HR Giga biomechanoid insanity. It should look like what you get in Scorn. Yeah? Yeah. yeah That's yeah. what their civilization should look like. But no, they again, it does this thing where it just makes them into human beings. It just makes them into like bigger, slightly like elfin looking human beings. It doesn't make a lick of sense. No. No. Also, the potential there for some really cool body horror would have been amazing, but it doesn't really do that. It doesn't really do that. I mean, they could have had the engineers like bursting out into all manner of mutations and things clawing their ways out of them and different entities unleashed from that bombardment. But no, it just effectively no. kills them. Yeah, it just turn, turns them into uh, like sort of, the sort of stuff they would have uncovered from um, Pompeii. Yeah, like yeah, it's, it's effectively uh, that. It is effectively that. And it, you know, it just also, I mean, there's other problems with this as well. So the engineers are an incredibly hyper advanced civilization. Hmm. How in the fuck does a warship, a, a ship that's been on a quest of desolation, get that close to a, 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 a civilization center? Don't they have any protocols at all? Don't we have this? Well, uh, I, I, I didn't, I didn't take it. I don't know. They can't I didn't, I didn't take air- it to be. Yeah, come on. You know, they can't approach fucking airports unless they get radio permission to make <laughs> sure everything's above board. So you're telling me this hyper advanced civilization with, that, that, can, that can play with life and DNA as though it's like silly putty doesn't have any of that. Doesn't have any safety protocols or procedures when it comes to ships or landing or anything like that at all. Well, I misread it the first time because I th- I thought that the the, the the ship is the planet isn't necessarily the engineer's home planet. It could be like a colony world uh, yeah. or something like that. Um, but then again, you don't know categorically one way. I mean, it's implied it's supposed to be a home world, but you don't categorically mm. know one way or the other. And that's the problem. That's the problem that this film does a lot. It it's the it's the number of times the film compromises. Yeah. To to just move on to the next bit. So I've yeah. I've given you this, 
But you know, I, I kind of feel like I need to wrap it up. So we'll just just say, oh, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. And, We're and, not going to explore this in any great depth at all. So let's move on to this. Let's move on to this. It because the whole the whole film each after each set piece or each revelation or blah blah. blah you're left wanting just a little bit more, just to wrap up that particular scene, and nothing ever, nothing happens. It never, it doesn't, not once, not fucking nothing once. Is, does it do it. Nothing is baked enough. Nothing in the script is baked enough. It needed at least two or three more passes. Same with Prometheus. Same as Prometheus, right? But so Prometheus, what I'm about. It, it, it you falls know. into the same. I mean, you've identified what the, what the issues and what the pitfalls were, and that somehow, in certain cases, you've just done it again into them and then you you are right as well by the way you know when you said that they've overcompensated that's the other flaw of the film they yeah. it's reactionary the film's reactionary so they what they've done is that that most awful thing they've done the thing that no creator of any any art ever should and they've listened to the audience you could <laughs> never do that. you could never fucking do that the audience don't know what they need if they yeah. if they did they'd be the artist they'd be the creator and when you do do that you create compromised work. So yeah. what's happened with Covenant is, I mean, it's probably the studios. This is most likely the studios. They've been online, you know, they've looked at all the complaints about Prometheus and they've gone, okay, so when we do this film, we need to do this, this, this. They'll have a checklist because they do, you know, yeah. we need to yeah. do this, 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 and this. And one of the big things is we need to answer a load of questions. People didn't like that in Prometheus. But the thing is, what they don't understand is, it's not the fact that Prometheus didn't answer its questions that's the problem. They've misunderstood. The problem with Prometheus is that it doesn't explore its ideas. Not yeah. answer them, it doesn't explore them. And this film commits that same sin, whilst also providing some of the most simplistic, insulting, and quite frankly, devastating answers to questions that shouldn't have been asked in the first place, and nobody yeah. asked anyway. So no, this no, film, not once, not once. You know, this film does the card. We, we spoke in the original Alien about how the title of the film is vast and resonant because it doesn't just refer specifically to the xenomorph, to the alien yeah. that's encountered. It refers to the whole universe. It refers to creation. Right. That's the point this vast unit it's lovecraftian you know that's the message of the original alien this universe is vast and unknowable and inimical to humanity so it's not just the alien it's everything reality itself will defeat our expectations of it and probably in horrific ways time and time again that's yeah. the message of the original alien that's where the horror comes from fast forward to covenant what does it do it tells you where the fucking alien comes from the xenomorph and not only that it's not an alien it's not a fucking alien. It's created no. by David, the creation of humans, from human DNA. So it's like, fuck off. Sincerely, yeah. you have just undermined, you've not just undermined yourself, Undermine. you've undermined years. the entire mythology. Yeah. The entire mythology, <laughs> the basis of its cosmic horror, and you that, just ripped apart. And that, for me, I mean, as I said, for the most part, when we saw Covenant in the cinema, for the most part, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that was the thing that I came away from it, and I just went, no, that's not good enough. That, no. that's, that's Do you know not... what? That is almost certainly a studio mandate, because the orig I know that with the original writers of the original script, one of their, one of their watchwords was, the xenomorph is not going to be in this. That yeah. was one of their watchwords. So clearly, somewhere down the line, the studios got involved. Said, oh, you've got to have an alien in your alien film. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. And this is the result. This compromised, well, completely ignorant, uncomprehending explanation for something that not only didn't require an explanation, by its very nature, can't actually withstand an explanation. The yeah. minute you know, the minute this is the explanation for where the alien comes from, that's it. That's yeah. it. And it's the it's most horror. it's, it's the most unsatisfying answer that they could have possibly yeah. come up with. Absolutely. Now, I, I I don't mind the idea, by the way, of David tinkering with the black goo and tinkering with genetics and making all sorts of monsters. I think that's great. I think that's a load yeah. of fun. And they could have done so much with it. They could have made this planet David's Garden of Eden, where every inch of flora and fauna is created from david's laboratory and therefore kind of inimical kind of hostile but yeah. no they don't do that they don't no. do that 
even if he'd, he'd have messed with the black girl, created some mutants, done, done fucking, I don't know, God knows what, and then through um, through species integration or, or, or uh, invasive uh, contact or something like that, eventually, mm. several generations later, through whatever fucking, whatever, you might get something akin to, but not the alien. Yeah, I would, I would have, I would have settled more for that. Yeah, but the first thing, fucking useless captain who, who's like sort of old god, 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 um, takes David at his word and goes, "Oh, what's this?" He goes, I, I, I just, "Perfectly I, harmless." I love that, by the way. I mean, he has just seen that David's interacting with the the, the alien, which the alien creature, the, the spore born one, is really cool. I really like that creature, and I like the fact that David has a kind of rapport with it. You know that he's learned how to to interact with it but he's yeah. already seen david interacting with it after it's murdered his crew member yeah, so why in, the, why in the name of hell does he follow him anywhere and it stick his face right into an egg that's just honestly. opened up in front of him i thought honestly. to myself at, at this point th- this is fucking darwinism working overtime uh, yeah it's, this it's is so stupid it's so stupid it doesn't make a lick of sense and Again, I know because you know time, uh, time constraints and like that. Again, the uh, rapid gestation thing mm-hmm. that, seems, that seems to be getting more and more um, quicker and quicker and quicker with yeah. each instalment that has anything to do with the alien. It's it's the jangling keys thing again. It's this this film does not trust its audience at all. In the same way that Prometheus doesn't, by the way. It's pretending to be profound and big and clever, but it's not. It's actually treating its audience like we're fucking idiots. Um, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't, this one does not go together cohesively as a film. It's too no. truncated. The editing is weird. The editing it, of this film yeah. is all over the bloody place. It's really actually quite bad. Yeah, we, you know? we, we, we noticed a couple of times, well, hang on, that, that's a weird cut to go from that to that. Mm-hmm. Or something like that, which just kind of makes you wonder what 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 they cut out in order to actually justify that. Um, look out. But the, lots that hit the cutting room floor of this film. Let, let's look at the final product, the the actual final alien, which causes shenanigans huh. on the uh, on the uh, ship as they're trying to get away, and yeah. the one that one the one that comes up later and like that. The physical movement for it. There's mm-hmm. one scene where it's it gets into the cargo bay and they're going to trap it in that Land Rover thing, mm-hmm. and that, mm-hmm. I swear it saunters in. It walks it walks in, maybe like its name was Huggy Bear, and it was a bit of a pimp, and then do, goes into this strange leap and a jump and a skip where the movements are so unnatural. Yeah. So the physical form that that's that's um, actually portraying them, yeah. and I, I know you talked about like the CGI in Alien Resurrection for for some of the aliens wasn't mm. wasn't the best, but their their movements were at least uh, coherent. To maybe yeah. I mean the, the, the one in Alien Three was a little bit janky, but then again that was a puppet that that that, yeah. that was and also and that was still more natural than this one. That was like early 1990s. You can sort of forgive yeah. it. You can, you forgive, can it, sort yeah. of forgive it. This I've is filmed... 2000 and what now? Yeah, 19? 2014. Is it? No, it's later, isn't it? It's 2000, 2018, I think, with this one. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I thought myself, I'm, that did not convince me at no. all. The, 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 it might as well have just had a ba da ba 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 da as it walked mm-hmm. into the cargo bay and then does this weird leap and a jump and a skip. I, I, I thought, no, you've completely misunderstood how the anatomy of this creature works yeah that whole sequence actually of the alien being on the uh, an alien being on the ship it's so contrived and also it doesn't fit with the rhythm of the film it feels like an add-on at the end and it's it it just doesn't work the whole sequence just feels too just tacked on it just the whole thing feels tacked on they've tried um repeating what they did in alien Mm -hmm. and they've tried to repeat what they did in aliens yeah, the alien on the ship thing, the tacked on scene, but those tacked on scenes worked brilliantly because immediately before then, there mm-hmm. was absolute calm. There was, yeah. you you felt like a, there, there was a closure to the story and everything like that. I mean, the the alien reveal in the uh, the escape pod from the Nostromo. Oh, it's brilliant! Is still one of the one of the best 
I, I, I expect every time I see it, I'm expecting it. I can see the head. I can yeah. see I can see its dome. And yet even then, I cannot be absolutely guaranteed that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's really clever. It's really beautifully done. Um, and it works in Alien. As you say, because it's well-timed, it's well-paced. Here, yeah. it feels contrived. Here, yeah. it feels like it shouldn't be there. It feels like, well, how? But you know, but how you know it it's going to be. There, you know? Yeah, it shouldn't be there, but you know it's going to be there mm-hmm. and it's, yeah it, it just uh, it doesn't work it doesn't work it, it doesn't work and it actually i as i, as I said me and jenny enjoyed the film when we first saw it. when we saw it uh last week or the week before we actually both sat there at the end and went i'm mildly annoyed actually yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a bad film isn't it i mean it is an actually bad film it just doesn't doesn't have any coherence it feels so oh. It feels so compromised. The whole film feels so compromised all the way through. That's what I I get from it. Yeah, and I think the reason I didn't pick up on that the first, the very first time we saw it in the cinema, I think the reason I didn't pick up on that, whereas normally I would have done, is because I was sitting there going, it's not Prometheus. It's not Prometheus, right, yeah, yeah. But watching Um, it back two or three times later, you think to yourself, actually, you're fucking, you're closer to Prometheus than you'd like to admit in some cases. Absolutely. In many ways, it is closer to Prometheus, but in all the wrong ways, in all the worst ways. So they haven't actually fixed any of the problems of Prometheus. No, no, it's it's incredible. they've ladled on an entire new raft of problems to go along with it. And it, it, it just fundamentally compromises this film. I mean, for me, any future installment, and I'm sincerely hoping Romulus does this, We'll just ignore both Prometheus and Covenant. I don't. I, well, I, I, I'm yes. hearing such conflicting fucking things about that. I mean, I, Me I, 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 I sent you the the teaser trailer. Yeah, and, now, and I've watched the trailer, and I'm like, it looks technically very competent, but yeah, but it still there's, just there's, looks there's like the they're doing Alien and Aliens again to me. From the trailer, it from just tra- looks like Alien and Aliens again to it, me, it and I don't does. Love- it does, and I and I appreciate how you'd be probably against that. But mm. I I looked at the teaser trailer and I went, I said to Jen, look at the set design. Mm, the set look design. The set I design. mean, look at the lighting. The, look at the set. The trailer. It looks technically really good. Like the the, the the technicals of what they're doing look really really good from what we've yeah. seen. Um, for me, it's all going to re- rely on the script. If it is just once again a rehash of Alien or Aliens, and it doesn't do anything new, and I'm I'm not interested. I am yeah. like so not I've, interested. I'm I've, tired at this point. This is a wider. It's a wider problem, but I am so burnt out with fucking nostalgia. I'm so yeah. fucking burnt out with it. I don't want it anymore. I think I mean, it's a wider complaint, but I think certainly in our culture in the UK, it's a sickness. I think it's sheer sickness at the moment that is compromising our ability to look forward and to appreciate new art. I really do feel that. Um, I I don't want another nostalgia trip. I don't. I I, I appreciate that. that. However, fucking Ghostbusters that's in the cinema at the moment. It's awful. It's awful. It's a terrible film. Is it's it? a terrible well, fucking well, film. We're, we're going to go and see, we're going to go and see that Monday. It is a. Te- I, I, I personally, I thought it was a terrible fucking film, and all it is is nostalgia porn. That's all it is. It is. Okay. It, it's cynical. It is contrived. It is like it's all it is is boring, boring, boring. Bill Murray, boring, boring, boring. Bill Murray, boring, boring, boring. <laughs> That's all it is, okay. and it's like. Oh. For fuck's sake, you know, it's like I I don't need that. I don't want that. I'm tired of that. I don't want like a film from the 1980s. It's not the 1980s anymore. No, it's I, not I, the 1990s I do, anymore. I do very much appreciate that, and uh, but I've I've had conflicting things. I've had one that this film will tie into Covenant and Alien. Yeah, but, I've, but I, I've also but I've also heard that this film will disregard the f- how the xenomorphs come to be from Covenant. Yes, let's hope so. I mean, the only way I would like this to tie into either Covenant or Prometheus is David. Yeah. I, w- I would like to see David in it. Or, I mean, you know, a, a version of David. Because let's let's not forget, there are loads of versions of David out there. He's a, he's a, a, the benchmark for yeah. a model of Android. So there are potentially hundreds of Davids out there. So there's yeah. no reason why you can't bring a David aboard. Yeah, but I, how could you have uh, 
like sort of oh, I was going to tie it into Covenant and uh, Prometheus and also Alien, but at the same time, it's going to totally disregard what Covenant did in terms of. I mean, I appreciate that you don't want to go down another nostalgia trip. However, what I will say. <laughs> Um, I mean, as I said, I got all excited. I got excited for the trailer. That's the problem. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> but I saw, I saw the set design, and I thought you're taking cues from Alien Isolation here, which yeah. is very interesting. Um, I, the lighting, in particular, grabbed my attention in the, in the teaser trailer, and things <laughs> like that. And I appreciate that nostalgia can be a bit of a problem because it doesn't allow an IP to move forward. However, I will happily settle for a certain dose of that in this film. Because if it's such far enough away, so, so it basically takes the taste of Covenant and Prometheus out of my mouth. If you can give me just enough element of Alien Age, and I, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. Again, mm-hmm. give me give me the set design because I saw the set design in that um, trailer made me feel instantly that this film is part of that universe. Whereas Covenant and Prometheus, I had a hard time reconciling the two. Yeah, I mean, for me, I at this point, I I really don't care about the aesthetic. I don't care about that. I just want I want it to be good in and of itself. I want well, of course, it to be of course, but we, we, you know. we all do. We all do. Um, um, I I'm just tired of the nostalgia porn, and I'm tired of it being used as an excuse for bad cinema. And the way people swallow it as well, that really bothers me. I've seen people crying the praises of films like, for example, like the new Ghostbusters, and it's it's bad. It's a bad film. It's badly put together. Um, mm-hmm. wow. The only reason people think it's good is because it's twinge. It's doing that dopamine hit thing. It's twinging. Oh, I remember that from when I was a kid. You know, it's associative. It's associative. And I'm just bored of that. I want something different and new and interesting. And the thing with the thing with the alien universe is there's so much potential in it. It could stand that. You can do interesting new wacky wild things with this universe and with this mythology there's so much that hasn't been explored here um, well that's that's why I'm, I'm i'm kind of surprised that because for the longest time romulus was uh i mean we'll, we'll end up doing a video on this anyway when it comes out but for the longest time I, romulus was a tv show it was a, it was a adapt tv adaptation which I think possibly open shots are more. You're not as constrained as you are by a cinematic offering. No, that's it, and it worries so, me. It worries me a little that that is the transition that it's had. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder that, when and why. Yeah, that I'm suggests sorry. to me that it's going to be a bit truncated from what it wanted to be. But let's see. I mean, I'm I'm open to it being brilliant. If it's brilliant, then oh great you know absolutely wonderful well hope hope always springs eternal um yeah but i i will not trust that it will be i just i you know at this point i won't i i won't like place any bets on it no uh, it was di- yeah. it's directed by the guy who did the evil dead uh sort of oh, the remake, remake. yeah oh, that's not a bad thing necessarily that is an okay remake it's a perfectly serviceable okay remake you know it's yeah. um it's quite fun that remake and yeah. it does what i hope remakes do which is it takes the original material then ramps them up and does something interesting with does them. Something a bit, yeah does something a bit different with it i mean uh... so that's not necessarily bad that's not necessarily bad but again it's going to live or die by its script it depends on what the story well, yeah. is yeah 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 you know if it if it's just rehashing alien or aliens it ain't going to work I mean, I mean, there seems to be something about a space station or something like that. And I'm wondering, I was wondering to myself, I wonder how much inspiration you might be pulling from isolation for yeah. this. Yeah. Um, which, if you do pull inspiration from isolation, that's not the worst place to get it. Be- it's really not. I mean, that is probably the most sincere sequel to the to the Aliens film that you're going to get, to be honest. Again, yeah, the, the environment feels, the, the environment felt familiar. The, the, there, was te- there was genuine tension when I played the game. There, there was occasions where I thought to myself, I'm not sure I want to be doing this. Exactly, um, it's really terrifying. I mean, the, the, the game is so frightening. It's a really clever way of injecting something so familiar, like the Xenomorph, with a, a, a new lease of life, right? To make it yeah. demonstrating how it is actually a scary thing again. Yeah. Um, it really worked. I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic video game and a fantastic installment to Alien. 
Yeah. So if if, if they're pulling any, because here's the same thing at the same time, this film comes out in August and we still know very, very, very little about it. Um, We've so, seen images, really, to be honest. Yeah. We don't know anything about the story. We don't know anything about the script. We don't know where it's going to go. You know, I mean, for me, I want to see more than just the alien. Yeah. At this point, I want to see more than the xenomorph going on. I, I think it's a little bit played out. You know, I think that monster is a little bit played out at this point. Let's throw the net wider. Let's look at what you can make from that creature, you know, or from yeah. that base template and move it on a little bit. Um, Prometheus should have gone there. Covenant should have gone there. Covenant inches that way with Spore Alien. It inches that way, but it's not far enough. I tell you something. I I, th- I think they've missed a trick with it. Do, do you do you ever remember the um? Uh, I think they must have been from the uh, early to mid nineties. There was a series of books based on like sort of red and black aliens, where there was like a, a sort of civil war between species. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. There was like a that, yeah, they were like basically like red and black ants, weren't they? That's what they were yeah. drawing inspiration from. And there was a like a. Like an evolutionary war between them, wasn't there? To see which yeah. ones would the, more the dominant. Yeah. That, that, if, if, sort of, with a little bit more concentration and time and effort put into it, that could be a very, very interesting thing to explore. Yeah, yeah, it could. I mean, I think I, I have a problem with whenever they try to make the alien evil. Yeah, and that's a really strange thing to say, but it, it starts to happen in aliens, funnily enough. In alien, the creature is unknowable. You don't really know what it's doing. You don't really know what it wants. In aliens, mm. they start to become, first they start to become insect. That's yeah. basically a colonial insect. But they also become evil because the queen is intelligent. It makes decisions. You know, it becomes yeah. hostile. And that's yeah. a real problem for me. I don't want them to be evil. They're not. They're just creatures. They're animals, you know? And if, if Covenant does one tiny little thing, if it suggests one tiny little thing, it introduces the notion of reason and restraint when David actually interacts with the damn thing. Yeah. That's interesting. That's really fucking interesting. More, please. Yeah. Let's uh let's see what it what it brings up. I mean for the most part I I, I wanted Covenant, to, I mean, I, you know, every, we all did. I wanted Covenant to be more of a success, and I, I'm sort of kicking myself really as a fan uh, and a, a lifelong fan of the franchise that I didn't spot the issues it had when I first saw it. Well, I was because- I was deeply cynical going in. I was I was so burned from Prometheus that when I watched all of the like the preamble material, you know, mm. all the stuff, all the little webisodes and things and documentaries but i remembered this is what happened with prometheus this is exactly what happened with prometheus you had all these like flapping heads talking about oh it's going to be so clever it's going to be this it's going to be that we're going to be talking about these issues and that and this and that and i was like well yeah i've heard that i've heard the cant before i don't want to hear it again i want to i just just i'll just watch the film and make up my own mind and i just found it dull for the most part I just found it dull. The most interesting bits were the bits with uh, with David um, and Walter. Uh, yeah. Beyond that, uh, I just couldn't, and I can't retain it either. That's the other thing. Yeah, I can't retain this film. It it slips out of my mind. Um, and after this, the latest watch, I've no doubt next by this time next year, yeah, I'll have forgotten thing. it all over again. And yeah. that is that is damning. That is damning for any film. There are loads, there are swathes of bad films which are memorable. You remember them or, yeah. you know, things from them. This just slides out of my mind because it feels, whenever I watch it, it feels like an, an incomplete thing. Uh-huh. It doesn't yeah. feel like it's baked. It doesn't feel like it's a whole film, you know? And it feels like something that should never have gotten to the filming stage. Ever, ever, ever. It's not there yet. Yeah, I mean, th- th- this this new one that's coming out, as I said, it's got the director of uh, the Evil Dead remake and it's something else he did, but Ridley Scott is executive producer, and I okay. went, oh, okay, as long as as long as you're not too creatively involved, because yeah, you, you've... because from what I understand, a lot of Prometheus' problems came from Ridley. Yeah, lot- yeah, I'm saying about that. Yeah, I mean, Damon Lindelof has a a lot to answer for as well because he is 
I, I can see his markers as a writer. After loss, I can see his markers. And he has that hideously pretentious thing of, I'm, I, I, he thinks that profundity is just referencing ideas. That's what he thinks it is. He thinks that something is clever if it references ideas. If it just brings them up, that makes it clever. That's what he thinks. Yeah. And it's like, I can see that all the way through Prometheus. I can see the, the dregs of it in Covenant. And you know, I don't want him anywhere near it either. Because yeah. he, I, I just think he's a bad writer. I think he is actually a, just a terrible writer who got lucky. You know, he just got lucky. Well, e- even if Covenant's script was was actually more profound and actually uh, sort of doubled down on the ideas that it, it sort of casually sort of throws out and, and explored, them, the film would still be hideously undermined by very, very unconvincing, badly thin, thin, sorry, thinly written characters. Because yeah. I, I mean, I mean the the gratuitous butchering in the shower thing um, mm-hmm. of, of, the, of those two. Me and Jen laughs because yeah. the, the woman who's who's getting it on with the guy in the shower and then they both get ripped apart. I said to Jen, hang on a minute. Didn't that woman have her head ripped off on the planet 30 minutes ago? <laughs> and she went, yeah, I couldn't tell you between the it's two of them. Say, it? uh, it's, it's hard to say. And, and it's, and it's difficult, especially the scene in the grass. You don't know who's getting killed, who's not. Yeah. And you, don't care anyway so you don't care that's the big thing you don't care right it doesn't matter because you don't give a shit there's not enough anchorage for these characters for you to give much of a shit yeah i mean uh, again I, the most I hate interesting sp- characters are the androids yeah i hate spiders right i hate <laughs> anything arachnid and yeah i i'm i remember seeing it in the cinema with, with Jen, and right at the end, where david uh brings up the the two alien hatchling eggs and puts them in the incubator and i went Look, baby face huggers. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's adorable and yeah, also right. absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's it's that's when it starts like giving you the indication that it's going to maybe slip back into alien resurrection territory with mm-hmm. the slightly ho- uh, hokey comic yeah. book element. It does, doesn't it? I mean, I I really feel sorry for Fassbender in these films because he is trying. His oh, he's put the work in. Fucking hell, yeah, he's, he's put the really work in. really trying. And he believes in this. You know, he really he really does want this to be the best it can be. But he's he's just in a bad film, unfortunately. He is the yeah. best thing in a really, 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 really bad film. Yeah, and the rest of the characters can do one. Uh, I, I am struggling. I'm trying to recall them all now, and I am struggling, struggling, struggling. Yeah, the only ones I can think of... Uh, Tell, uh, Tennessee, who's Danny McBride, whose mm-hmm. motivations throughout the whole film are wildly incompatible with his duties of the yeah. as, as what he's supposed to be doing. So his head's not in the game. You've got Daniels, who's a grieving window, who, widow, who then, at the drop of a hat, just completely forgets she's a grieving widow and is bust out your tank top action girl. And, yeah. and, and I thought to myself... Of all the characters to survive the film, uh, I'm very, very surprised it was you two for a start. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. Again, one of those films where you kind of, it would have been more satisfying if no one had made it out. Yeah, uh, yeah, it absolutely Maybe, was. maybe I mean, David I mean, gets back to the Covenant. Maybe David gets <laughs> back to the Covenant and still throws up his little alien list and now he's in charge of fucking 2,000 colonists or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But if nobody else made it out, that would have been a little bit more believable and far more acceptable narratively yeah it's yeah it's a bit i can see why there hasn't been an alien film since this one i can definitely see why because it was just a damp squib of nothing wasn't it well don't forget that this is the film that that they greenlit and kiboshed um fucking uh uh, neil blomkamp's yeah Yeah, i know which had which from what all the artwork i saw had the making to be something fucking Bat shit yeah. insane. Didn't that have the backing of Sigourney Weaver as well? That one. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's. I mean, like, wow. And he, even wow. Michael Bain was uh, like sort of interested in in like, sort of wow. prize in the role for for reasons, and that. And they, it was it was just about, it was at the final stages of green light, and then the executives at 20th Century Fox all got together, collectively wanked into a pot, and just went, "No, we're going to yeah. green light 
really like Covenant instead. We're gonna do Covenant instead. Let's let's let Ridley have another go, eh? He might yeah, get it right well, why not? Why not? <laughs> and that's uh, why, that's why this this franchise with six ex, uh, um, established films in its canon only has a fifty percent hit rate, and that that hurts. That that is that is it shocking. Really does numbers. because that is it's, shocking I mean, I'm sure people who've listened to like the latter half of these videos will think that we hate it. That we absolutely hate, and that's not true. I, I, a, the Alien is one of my favorite franchises ever created. It yeah. introduced me to H.R. Giga, you know, one of my favorite artists ever. Um, yeah. I don't think I may not have discovered him, certainly not in the same way, um, without that. And he's a, he's a massive influence on me and my work, you know, my writing work. He's a huge influence. Um, but there's no denying that there's there's only a handful of good films. Those handful of good films are spectacular they're yeah. genre defining brilliance but the bad films are bad they're yeah. really execrably bad and covenant i mean can't even be that arsed to be that angry about it it's such a it's such a nothing you yeah. know and that's that's one of the, ironically one of the greatest condemnations i can give it's not even worth getting that angry about i didn't get angry about covenant when i saw it yeah. i was just like eh. I couldn't work up the emotion, you know. It's interesting how uh, sort of studio f- interference, because uh, 20th Century Fox never, never fucking learned. It's interesting how studio interference can have such an impact one way or the other. So with Alien Three, as you said, it's a, it's a miracle the film got made in the first place. It's and, an exists. and yet, and yet, it is one of the finest entries in the franchise mm-hmm. despite the studio interference yep. this one on the other hand as you said if if, if it's a studio mandated film um and it just goes off the fucking ball literally within the first three minutes of dialogue in the film yep. it starts unraveling itself oh the dialogue is awful i mean the dialogue in the film is absolutely awful it's all perfunctory you know it's all exposition it's all about we've got to do this to go here to do this. it's very it's what's called um and then storytelling you know where yeah. it's like then and then and then and then and then and it's but like the, for god's sake just opening, opening up, converse, get on with it you know the opening conversation between Wayland and david um has the tendrils to make it sound like it's begun it's going to be the most profound yeah. conver- conversation between two characters that but you've ever heard to the point it's one of those scenes that they could dissect in uh film study classes in university watch the interaction between these two characters and sort of blah 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 and the conversation unravels itself in the first three minutes of dialogue, and yeah. therefore the film isn't able to put those tendrils back together. Yeah. You know what else I really hate? You know that, that weird contrivance between um, Walter and David, where David misquotes Shelley. And he, he, he says that it's Byron. It's yeah. not Ozymandias, it's Shelley, obviously. You know, I, I was like, what? 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 I don't. They're trying to say something there, clearly. They're trying to basically knock David down a notch or two, you know. They're trying to make him more like the flawed villain. And that just doesn't work. That doesn't work. The whole basis of David's character from Prometheus is undermined by that. Yeah. The perfection I, I, of David actually makes him really interesting as a villain, as an antagonist. I, I thought that was... A, I mean, I could be reading it wrong, but I took that to be... Um, uh, a leftover side effect of the damage he would have sustained when he had his head ripped off. It's possible, and, uh, yeah. And, and obviously, Shaw has put him back together, sort of blah, 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 blah and he's just, he doesn't work right the same it's way. Not quite as good anymore. Which, you might, know, which might, might have led to him going on this mad scientist thing. Again, yeah. you don't know for certain because that that's um, viewer interpretation. Yes, it's never yeah. explored. It's not explained. It's it's, it's just, explored enough, is it? It's just a weird little quirk that suddenly pops up that is never mentioned again. It's you know, so many films are guilty of that, but to have two films guilty of the same sins and of all back, like the, back you know, to back. The thing what really bothers me is of all the romantic poets it could have quoted, it goes for Ozzy, it goes for Shelley's Ozymandias. And the problem with that is there are loads of allusions in Prometheus to the likes of Blake and Shelley and the, the, the romantics, effectively. And given yeah. the metaphysical like qualities of these films, 
they could have gone for a Blake. That would have made more sense than this very... My, my guess is that's the first romantic quote that came to the, the, the minds of the writers. They didn't bother exploring it any further. They didn't bother looking like that maybe there's something more interesting, you know, less cliche that we could have David quote. No, let's go for Ozymandias, which everyone does at high school, you know? It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, fuck off. You know, <laughs> honestly, fuck off. Not even Shelley's best poem. Well, yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> It is what it is, isn't it? I mean, that that's if if you were, if you were going to sum up Alien Covenant, not not take Prometheus out of the equation. If you were just going to have Alien Covenant on its own, the most you could say about it is it is what it is. It is what it is on its own, without the patina of the Alien franchise. It's yeah. a it's a D grade B movie. It's not. It? Yeah, it's it's, a, it's bad. It's actually it's not, bad. It's not even a three star film. No, it's not. And, it really isn't. And I, I kind of feel sorry for the for the for the people who work on these films, like the the, the, the technical crews, the, yeah. the, the, the you know the, the digital effects artists, the because the, you know you've got thousands of names attached to these films mm. who put their time and effort and their soul into these things, and it still comes out mm. like that, like that, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and you know there is work in this film. That's what's so annoying. You can't have a film like this that has like X amount of millions yeah. of dollars behind it and not have loads of work in it so there's loads of design work there's loads yeah. of technical the, work you know yeah, it's people, just it, people were putting in work on prometheus and, and, it, and it showed yeah. in, in the visuals and the mm. and the scope of what it's what it suggested it was going to do yeah. and then just doesn't and then it's, it just it, doesn't it, come together it doesn't come it, together it doesn't work yeah. that's the problem isn't it you can have as many like brilliant technical details if you like if, if it's a bad yeah, film yeah. bad film you know it just it, it doesn't bad matter film, it? i always compare like prometheus in particular to a film that heavily inspired it which is mario bava's uh, planet of the vampires and right. mario bava is the exact opposite of ridley scott so mario bava works with nothing that's his that was his whole shtick in the 1970s he was he would work with nothing with mm -hmm. the most limited materials he could get and the smallest budget imaginable create these b move science fiction and horror b movies that were nevertheless incredibly profound yeah. and so simultaneously not ashamed of their b movie route so they're hokey as all hell you know they're, they're loads of fun yeah. um, planet of the vampires is prometheus if you go and watch mario barber's planet of the vampires prometheus right, the remake of it could be a remake. Right. Okay. The Planet of the Vampires is better. It's a better film, despite having uh, not even like a, a, a 0.0015 th of the budget. <laughs> it's a better film. A part of what makes it a better film is it has all of the questions and implications that Prometheus does. Yeah. But it doesn't, it's not pretentious. It's not pretentious. It knows what it is. It knows that it's a B-movie and runs with that. And that yeah. makes it better. You don't expect a B-movie to have all this clever and interesting stuff in it, right? So it frames it in a much more interesting way. Um, Prometheus and Covenant after it are, the, you know, their pictures should be in the dictionary next to the word pretentious. Because <laughs> that, it's, and it's the legitimate use of the term as yeah, well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those terms that's massively overused and misused. It's misapprehended. You know, people tend to use it to refer to people or to things that, that are exploring ideas that they don't understand. And that's not how it works. Pretentious means when someone or something is referencing ideas that they don't understand. And that's Prometheus to a T. That is, that's like down yeah. to the core. And yeah. it's also Covenant. It's also Covenant. Yeah. It's, it's just a shame that for, for a film that, that or that's quoted as saying, you know, it, it will address a lot of the things uh, yeah. that Prometheus got wrong. It's right, yeah, yeah, you addressed them. You did address them. I, I will give you props for that. But I'm going to take those points away because you addressed them in the same way that Prometheus mm -hmm. did. And you addressed them badly. And you addressed them badly. You addressed and, them badly, you know. And, you and didn't in a way that undermined everything. And this is the thing, you know, th th this playlist, um, depending on how many Alien films they make in the future, this yeah. playlist this playlist could potentially um, conclude with Romulus. And could I don't want this playlist to go out on a damp squib. Because yeah. if, if, if Romulus was off the table or... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if if it if it had been canned, if it had been cancelled, blah blah blah, and yeah. this was the closing chapter of this playlist, 
then it's fucking gutting that this is the closing. It's kind of sad, isn't it? It's kind yeah. of sad. I mean, I'd even prefer to go out on the, the depths of Prometheus. Because at least <laughs> there's something to talk about, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, we've managed an hour and ten minutes on this so far. We haven't done that. It's, it is. It is. It's true. But most of that is us talking about how empty and vapid the film is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it, yeah. That's the other thing, right? There's nothing to get your teeth into here. There's nothing. No. There's nothing substantial here. No. Oh, that's the other thing I fucking love. When they, when they land on the planet and one mm-hmm. of them goes, oh, this is wheat. And they go, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. So, well, are you going to do anything with that or what? No. No, no, no and, it, and it was never mentioned no, again. Do you, never do, you know, mentioned. do you know what? If, if, yeah, if I tell you something, I think which would have would have worked in our favour. If, if Romulus had been like a ten part TV series, we could have explored each episode in that a separate fi- separate video. That that would have that would have been, been really. I would have been so yeah. up for that. But we will do Romulus, right? We we, we will. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm up I'm, for it. I'm, I'm, I might have to take a little pad into the cinema with me and try and write down <laughs> points that I want to talk about. But um, we, we will definitely explore that. Um, and I hope that as a result, this even, even if this, this playlist doesn't go out on a higher note, at least it goes out on a slightly higher note so. than this damn squib. Fingers but, crossed. Uh, uh, Fingers there we are. There we are. Well, that was Covenant, ladies and gentlemen. It was, yeah. You know? I mean, wow, that's that's fantastic to have gotten here. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, before we go, uh, Joe, is there anything you'd like to pimp out? Uh, oh, Jesus, well, I'm still doing uh, stuff on the Wolf King One channel, so uh, check that out. You can find me on uh, Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Blue Sky, uh, all under the Wolf King One handle. Uh, you can also check out my Facebook page, which is uh a page for the channel itself um got loads of different shit going on different stuff i'm trying to do and sadly there's not enough days in the week to put out <laughs> all the content that i've got planned in my head <laughs> ah brilliant uh, links below ladies and gents to all of that as for myself same as usual you can find me knocking about here on exaggerated elegy a lot of stuff going on here there's uh we've got hannibal digested on at the moment where we're doing an episode by episode dissection of the uh brian fuller's hannibal because it's brilliant best tv show ever made um there's lots of video game let's plays and chats like this where we talk about film and cinema and all sorts of things uh, if you go over to arrow films you'll find the new uh, hellraiser uhd and dv uh blu-ray set rather the quartet of torment and myself and a uh, friend of the channel kit power feature on the hellbound disc we're on the featurette uh, Hell is What They Wanted. In fact, we're not just on it. It's our featurette. We made it. It's it's really cool. Uh, with the help of Jonathan Zarin, who is a um, film director who actually sort of composed the whole thing. Brilliant, brilliant fun. An hour and 40 minute chat about Hellraiser and uh, Clive Barker and stuff like that. It's great fun. Uh, in terms of my published work, if you go over to strangeplaygrounds.com, you'll find uh, links to all of my short story collections. Uh, if you go to Amazon and type in George Daniel Lee, you'll find my uh, Amazon author page where you'll find links again to all my short story collections and also all of the anthologies and things that I've been published in. Over on the gingernutsofhorror.com, uh, there's a, a series that I inherited from Kit, the very popular My Life in Horror series, which is a, a non-fiction series of articles about uh bits of media that have meant something to me there's a couple of those coming up at the moment uh i just did the mist stephen king's the mist uh there's going to be one coming up very soon on uh, raymond briggs is when the wind blows that's going to be a nasty one yeah that's going to be a heavy one so watch out for that um uh, you can also find me over on blue sky at the moment at exaggerated elegy and uh, with that guys thank you so much for listening when next we come back, hopefully it'll be Romulus. Yep. Brilliant. Until Excellent. then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.